Hey guys, what's up? It's been a little over a week now, maybe 10 days or so, I figured I'd make a video. Um, I originally w had a few ideas. Um, I've been thinking about making this funny video, not totally serious, uh, but um, kind of a you know little jab at old s kind of school style of songs. Uh, and another thing I've been thinking about is replying to Anarcho Pack and to Sauce. Uh, their discussion about anti-statism and anarchism, and possibly the history of libertarianism, but I'm not sure. And they've also had a recent discussion about mutual aid stuff, or not mutual aid, but uh, state welfare stuff. So those are three discussions I'm thinking about getting involved in. All three of them include Tassos and anarcho -Pac. But today I kind of wanted to do uh, something along the same lines as one of my other little more ranty, depressing kind of things. Uh, and this one's more about communications. Um, I really like to undercut myself when it comes to communications. Like, if you're ever talking to me on the internet, uh, I've noticed something lately is that I use a lot of emoticons. And I think I use a lot of emoticons when I'm talking because I'm really self-conscious about how I talk to people. And it's because, you know, I have Asperger's, I'm, I'm introverted, and I just don't have a good history of communicating to people because of those things that I have and just you know, just things of, uh, things, you know, some bad conversations happen whether you have that kind of stuff or not. And of course, I'm not really making excuses for myself, I'm just explaining why it happens. So, um, yeah, I do my best, really, I do. I try to communicate myself as well as I can. And, and you know, I know that we're all fallible and that um, there's a limit to how well we can communicate ourselves, but it really just kills me when I just fail at communicating myself to people. Like l like last night, for example, I was trying to explain to a friend um, a problem I was having with his website. Uh, and he just kept wanting me to re-explain myself, re-explain myself, and it was just driving me crazy. And then when I felt he made a few snide remarks, maybe did, maybe did, not important, uh, I lost it because it's just like, dude, I'm like trying to explain myself many times and I don't feel good about this conversation and my need for clarity is just not being met. I've, I've been reviewing nonviolent communication, so I'm going to word it like that, I suppose. Um, and uh, I should maybe make a video about that. I don't ne necessarily know if I totally buy the whole thing, but I think it's it's interesting. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, so my needs weren't being met in terms of a need for clarity and just comfort and stuff like that. And so he made a few remarks that I didn't like, and maybe they weren't as bad as I thought, but I just got off on him um, in a, wow, that was badly worded. I, really? Come on, see? See, so there it is. So there's there's my, I, I think of the, the, the best thing to say, the, the worst possible thing to say, but I think matches up great in my head. Like, it, sound, it sounded fine in my head, you know. I got angry at what he was saying, got off on him. No, not the same thing. So, see, right there, communication blurb, uh, communication, a lack of communication skills. So I'm sure, I mean, I know this is all fixable and stuff like that. By the way, it's not going to be a blooper. I'm totally keeping that in there because that was, that was wow. Um, anyway, so, uh, you know, again, I, I know that, uh, and I lost what I was talking about before, but I, I know that, you know, we're all fallible and stuff like that, but it's like especially when, Oh, I'm talking to a girl I like, or I'm talking to somebody about something really important, or I'm under a lot of stress because me and this person don't usually get along, so I have to like constantly think about what I'm saying and how I'm saying it. It puts a lot of pressure on me, and then when I mess up, it like puts more pressure on me, added to the pressure of making a comment. It's just like this is all online too. Like none of this is like uh, offline. Uh, even face-to-face -face discussions, you know, I have a hard time too because sometimes I look down like this and kind of mumble to myself um, but um, and that's not and that's no good of course uh, especially if you're trying to get employed you know you want a firm handshake and you want to um, you know make direct eye contact and even with the camera like I don't like making eye contact with the camera I don't like feeling like I have to I kind of shuffle around I I look you know sort of at the screen but I don't really look at the camera directly because I don't know I just don't like focusing in so intently on one thing um, so it's really tough for me to feel like I'm communicating myself well sometimes. And when I don't, I just, sometimes anyway, I get really upset with myself and then I undercut my, uh, my ego and I undercut myself. And, and by the way, I'm not looking for any sympathy or anything like that. I'm just, I'm just talking about a problem that I have and admitting that it is a problem. Always the first step kids. Um, and 
just putting it out there and you know I'm sure other people have these problems too and you know again it's not necessarily about getting sympathy I mean if you want to give me sympathy you know go for it I'd appreciate it I guess but uh, I'm more so trying to talk about a problem that I have and explaining you know why I think I have it and what I can do about it and I'm not really sure what I can do about it all I can do is to keep trying to clarify what I say and be careful about what I say take a few breaths if things are getting heated walk away come back uh, it's just sometimes I don't have any motivation to do anything except get it in the, into the conversation f further. And like, like last night when I was telling my friend, well, you should have gotten out of the conversation when it was getting heated like that, I was actually the one who made it more heated than it probably needed to be. I could have ignored the snide comments. Maybe you shouldn't have made them. Or maybe I was wrong to think that they were snide, whatever. But um, it was... It just wasn't good for me to be in that conversation. And eventually, I mean, it wound up being fine, and he, he worked on the problem. Uh, has, I don't think he still solved it, but the, the, the point is is that um, it worked out. And actually, after, I even privately messaged him and told him that I was sorry for being an ass and, you know, all this other stuff. So um, it just, the communications thing, man, it just really undercuts my um, my feelings of adequacy, you know, uh, I don't feel like I can tell people how I feel uh, unless I'm really direct with them. And unless you're really direct with me, I don't know what you're saying. Uh, sometimes, you know. I mean, again, this is all on the average. I'm not talking at all times. You know, sometimes I have great conversations that go wonderfully and people understand what I'm saying. Or sometimes people don't understand what I'm saying, but it's not because I'm being uh, unclear. It's because of their own misconceptions or, or, uh, or uh, biased opinions or baggage that they have with me or uh, whatever so you know obviously there are lots of cases when this isn't the case but recently today of course this is why I'm talking about it um, is was just a time where somebody who um, and if they watch this they'll know I'm talking about them but that's okay because um, I mean it just doesn't matter at this point um, it's just like they hadn't been on Facebook for a long time, and so I tried to, um, I tried to talk to her, and you know, say that I kind of missed her, but I I didn't do it very well, cause like I came across as trying to really impose on her that she should stay on Facebook just because like I don't get to talk to her, and that's not what I was trying to do. I was just trying to say like, you know, um. I miss you, I haven't seen you on Facebook in a while, I hope you come on more often. And I even told her that in a private message, but it's like, I just get so uh, unsure of myself. Especially when like she was making these really short responses and they didn't seem to be very positive and they didn't seem to be done in a positive manner. And then in a later status message she made, she asked a question and I pretty much pointed out how to do the thing that she wanted in question and then she never commented or thanked me. Not that she has to, but it's like, my, my, my point isn't that she had to, but my point is that like when I'm in this state of mind, I'm like, oh my god, why didn't she? Did I say something wrong? Did she not like me? That, see, I mean, it's like, um, and I mean, in the general sense, as a friend, you know, not even anything past that, but just, you know, am I doing it right? Uh, am I doing it right? You're doing it wrong. Um, what am I doing wrong? Why can't I be clear with what I want to say? Um, and so um, that's just some of my problems that I really have and I'm not sure of clear answers um, and I'm not sure how to deal with people like you know the friends that I've mentioned here um, how to be more clear to them because um, people have like people have different needs for clarity some people need you to do such and such to be clear other people need to do a B and C to be clear instead of X Y and Z so it's not it's it's like even if I could accommodate one sort of need for clarity for one person that doesn't mean I'll get anywhere near close to somebody else um, which of course you know I'm not lamenting that this is all hard or whatever I'm lamenting that uh, it's overly difficult for me it shouldn't be this difficult obviously it's going to be difficult but I think I put too much pressure on myself more than I need to and it's really it's really unfortunate because I'm sure I do have some communication skills that I can really use to my advantage but I just undercut myself so much and and you know it starts off in the smallest of ways it starts off in self-doubt you know the the friend I was talking about earlier who hadn't been on Facebook in a while it took me 15 minutes sometimes to write comments to her and they're not long comments 
normally, if I was just in a debate, it would take me like, you know, five minutes or something to work out a, um, a random comment. Not a random comment, but a comment directed towards them or whatever. Um, and for her, it's like 15 minutes for a comment. And for another person, like a few weeks back, it was like I had to ask two people if what I was saying was, was right, um, if it made sense. Um, could I send it to this person, different person? But um, so I, I needed, you know, help with that. And they said, actually, they both said that it was a good, that it was good, and that they thought that I was doing the right thing. They especially emphasized my honesty, and that's something I really like to emphasize in communications: is honesty. Honesty is probably one of my biggest values. If you're a dishonest person, um, I will probably find it very, very hard to like you. Um, I don't do the hate thing; like I don't hate anyone. Um, maybe I can make another video about that sometime um, but I don't I don't really think it's constructive but anyway I wouldn't hate you but I certainly wouldn't want to associate with you I wouldn't like you and if anybody talked about you and said wow this person seems cool I'd be like I would obviously say to them especially if they were my friend but even if they weren't I probably would still say this maybe and it depends but um, you know generally speaking I'd say look be careful about this guy okay um, I know you're getting along well and that's great I'm happy for you but I'm and I'm gonna let you finish. But um, you know they they have some values that I feel are really detrimental to to any sort of social relation, or I probably wouldn't say it as philosophically or whatever as that. But you know, look, they they've treated me like crap. You probably shouldn't deal with them either, because I don't think there's any necessarily anything necessarily wrong with the way I treat them. I've just had people online on Facebook just been utter dicks to me for no good reason. Um, there's this guy named. Uh, well, I don't want to name him, but there's this guy who, like, egregiously uses, like, logic, like, logic, logical fallacies. He bullies people with logical fallacies. I'm going to put a video in the description of what I mean by that. But basically, he uses logic constantly, again and again and again, against people, even a bunch of, uh, well, so he's an anarcho-capitalist, or he calls himself an agorist. Yeah. Um, Anyway, even a lot of the people who identify with the same things he does thinks he's really abrasive, and unnecessarily so. And he's just a dick. Like, he's not even a troll. He's, like, being completely serious, too. Like, that's the difference between him and, like, other people who are just dicks just to be dicks, you know. Um, this guy's a dick just because he thinks he's right or whatever. So, yeah, I've just had... And, and it's, like, it's partly the Internet, because, like, the Internet makes for assholes. It makes... For people who are insulated from all the consequences of their communications but anyway not talking about other people talking about myself and that actually going back to myself that's been a problem for me too sometimes I'm just so insulated from the consequences of my word that I'll just say something and I don't really care if it hurts them because I don't it, and usually in the in the case being I don't know them or something but I try not to do that I really try not to be abrasive on the internet just because it's the internet um, I don't really think that's a good line of logic and I think it can easily lead to unnecessary assholishness. Not like assholishness is really necessary in general, but um, you know, egregious amounts of assholishness in, in life. And yeah, so this was pretty much a video um, around the uh, on the theme of giving up. It, I mean, it's pretty much in the same vein. And I don't remember if it came... Yeah, actually, the same person who inspired that video inspired this video. So, chalk up another win for her, I guess. Um, yeah, especially when I... Like, like a few more things. When I communicate with people who I've told myself I shouldn't communicate with, but I just got this addiction to talking to them, I just, like, really get bummed out. Um, and it just really hurts me because I'm like, shouldn't I know better by now? Shouldn't I know not to talk to these people? For whatever reason, I shouldn't be talking to this person, yet again and again I do. <sighs> so, um, anyway, if you've had this kind of experience or want to talk about an experience in the comments or just give me a bro hug or a sis hug um, or, you know, whatever, um, just leave it in the comments. I'd really appreciate any feedback or even a video response. I never get any of those unless I make a video response. Uh, actually, I've gotten a few of those, so that's not true. Invincible Luminous gave me a uh, thing on voting, in which I actually, by the way, via communication, um, convinced him that voting wasn't a good idea. So that was an amazing feat for me. Um, like Konkin says, the revolution begins one person at a time, 
And when you're especially engaging with people on a one-to-one, -one, especially in person-to-person, -person, communications are really important, uh, and they're really an art. So I don't have any recommendations for any people who are having communications issues. Uh, I think there's something called uh, the coasters or sea coasters or I can't remember what it's called. But anyway, they're this training program that teach you public speaking. So not necessarily communications on a more one-to-one uh, -one, uh, informal level, but still pretty important, it seems to me. Um, I think that's about it. Um, you know, maybe I'll keep making these kind of ranty sort of slush depressing videos um, 10 minutes long around there. Um, this has been around 10 minutes, maybe a bit more. Anyway, just want to thank you guys for watching. Um, and if you notice, my eyes are a bit red. I got the eczema back on my face. So it's my own fault for not washing my face and putting the moisturizer on. So lack of communications, right? I mean, I'm not communicating to myself what needs I have. So anyway, I, I do encourage you guys to check out Nonviolent Communications. It's an interesting thing. Uh, again, not sure I totally buy it, but I've only just begun to look into it. So I'm just kind of skeptical. Uh, I think that's it, and um, I'm going to be making other videos, hopefully soon, uh, at least trying to make one per week uh, and keep up with things. Uh, if I don't make a video for a while, I, I do apologize. I don't have anything coming up that I know of, but, you know, just in case. And again, the Volturi and Declare thing, I don't know. Um, I'm working on writing uh, The Ethics of Liberty and reading that, and I'm also reading... Oh, I just want to show you guys this. Recently got this in the mail for my lovely mother, who is just awesome for getting me this. Gates of Freedom, Voltaire Declare on the Revolution of the Mind by Eugenia C. de Lamont. And, uh, other way, Bozo. Anyway, her, uh, her name isn't that important. But what's important is that this book is awesome, and I totally encourage you to read it if you, uh, expect, well, I mean, start off with reading her biography first, probably, even though it's out of print. I know that was a lovely shot of me, sorry. <laughs> pelvic thrust um, and um, start off with her biography but um, make sure that you then go to her uh, you know Gates of Freedom and go to I don't know Exquisite Rebel and whatever else so anyway as usual I finish off talking about Voltaire and Declare uh, I would like to thank you guys all for watching and I will talk to you soon I am sure goodbye <laughs>